Welcome to the first video of the communication chapter. Well, you might have noticed I don't actually have an intro video for this actual video because I didn't have enough time and I figured I'm running out of time in terms of the HSC. So there's no intro videos for all the communication chapters, which is a shame, but hopefully I'll be able to make one in the future. Right, so the first dot point is quite straightforward. It just says identify the role of receptors in detecting change or detecting stimuli. So identify just means names. We need to name the role of receptors in detecting stimuli. And um, what was stimuli again? Stimuli was a change in the environment. So a change in the environment was a stimuli. And we're going to go over a couple of examples as well. But first of all, what was a receptor? And if you remember to maintaining a balance a couple of probably months ago by now, you would have done thermoregulation, right? So you had uh, you had heat receptors, these thermoreceptors which helped you to detect heat. And we're going to go over that really quickly again in a second. That's one example where a thermoreceptor detects change. So it detects a change in temperature. And without that actual change, without that detection, we wouldn't be able to make the response happen, which is to bring it up or bring it down back to the set point. It's a set point that homeostasis can't happen without the receptors. So that's more or less the role of receptors is the first part of detection and then after that, it goes for a sequence of events and leads up in the end to that response. But in this case, we're actually going to talk mostly about a different type of stimuli because this actual chapter is called communications. So it talks more about how we can use it for how we can use stimuli to communicate and what kind of roles these receptors have. So when it comes to these different types of receptors, we've got quite a few different types of receptors in our body. The most important ones are obviously stuff like for vision which are our photoreceptors. So these photo means light, receptors means they detect light. Um, hearing, these are often called mechanoreceptors. We actually have small little hairs in our ear which vibrate when they can detect sound and that vibration will get a message sent to the brain for interpretation. We're going to cover that more in, in the next couple of videos or in a couple of years time. Smell and taste, both of these are chemoreceptors. Chemo means chemical, so basically food or maybe fragrance, um, deodorants, all that kind of stuff. They have chemicals inside of them. And these chemoreceptors, such as our taste buds and our taste receptors, sorry, our smell receptors in our nose, they pick, pick up chemicals and then the signal gets sent on. And then these mycin Corpuscles are examples again of mechanoreceptors. These would be there, there for touch. So touch is another example where mechanoreceptors, which detect movement, so these detect movement, come in play. The reason why I'm mentioning all this is because while these receptors are important, right, they are the first part where detection occurs, without an actual whole nervous system, the receptors would be pointless, right? So the receptors tend to be the first point, so let's say there might be a receptor right here, but then that signal still needs to get sent all the way off into the brain and then from the brain back to a different point for a action, a response to occur. So the response happens not because of the directly because of the receptor, but the receptor picks something up, sends a signal on, and then eventually the response happens because of a huge amount of, of things that happen in between. Right. So one example would be the actual reflex arc. So reflex arc is when you just have a reflex reaction. So for example, if there's a fire or any kind of heat below your finger, there might be a sensory neuron. So that would be a receptor. A sensory neuron is a receptor. So the sensory neuron would be in this case because you're dealing with fire or heat. So it would be a thermoreceptor. So this thermoreceptor would pick up the change. This would detect the stimuli. Stimuli being a change in the environment, right? So this would be a stimuli. Beforehand, there was no or stimulus. Sorry, stimulus. So there would be beforehand there would be a normal temperature, maybe sort of room temperature. All of a sudden, the temperature changes, becomes quite hot. So that, that fire would have been a stimulus, that increase in temperature. Then we would have had one of these ones, which is a sensory neuron, which is again that's our thermoreceptor, and these ones help us detect that change. But once the, the, the change is detected, the signal, the signal needs to get sent on. So it gets sent from here all the way to, in this case, our spinal cord. 
And this message travels through something called these interneurons. Don't you remember the name, but these are often called the messenger neurons. So messenger neurons. And the spinal cord decides what to do, sends a signal back to the actual finger and activates something called a motor neuron. The motor ne neuron is the one that activates muscle, as this is a motor neuron. And this one will actually be the one that activates a muscle. And the muscle in this case is the effector. Remember the name effector? I mentioned a couple of times already. The effector is something that makes a response happen. So we have the motor neuron being activated, it activating a muscle, and the muscle now decides, it, it basically got told by the spinal cord to move up and move away from the actual flame, and that would have been your actual response. So the movement would be the response. The point being is that the actual stimuli, or stimulus by itself, needs to be detected, but then it needs to be sent on and sent to effector to make the response happen. Right? So the stimuli is the, sorry, the, the receptor is the first part of that whole response mechanism. And a couple of other examples. Again, the one that we just mentioned here is where we have a receptor in the skin. This part here. It detects a change. It sends a signal on for these messenger neurons. In this case, it goes, this is a reflex arc, it goes to the spinal cord. Then it gets sent back to the muscle. This is the this one is here is a motor neuron. That's the one that will activate the muscle. So the muscle is the effector because the effector makes the response happen. And then once you move away from whatever that hurt you, that was a response. Right? So again, a huge range of things in between the response. But you should know that the receptor was the first thing that made sure that the actual response could happen. Same with that thermoregulation. So this should be just quick review because you should have done this by now already. But if we have homeostasis, which tries to keep it at a set point, so our body temperature is maintained up usually about 37 degrees Celsius, but if there's an increase or decrease, or if there's an imbalance, in this case it would have gone too high, or in this case it would have gone too low, that's what, again, that's the stimulus because it is a change from the normal environment, so that change in temperature would have been our stimulus. That would have been detected by our receptors, so there would have been receptors in our blood, and as soon as there is an imbalance, these receptors would be detecting that change. These are, were our thermoreceptors. But then the signal gets sent on, so it gets sent on for neurons. You can use these messenger neurons. These would be the messenger neurons. You get sent on for the messenger neurons to the hypothalamus, which would have been this part here. That's our control center. And then it would be sent on next from the control center to the effectors, right? So for example, if the temperature is too high, remember, one of the effectors was our sweat glands, right? So this is our effector, and sweat reduces our body temperature, brings it back down to normal, and then everything's all good, right? So that's basically, again, one example of another stimulus being picked up by the, by the receptor, but from there on, it gets sent on to the rest of the mechanism, so the hypothalamus and then the effector. Yeah, the first part was the actual detection. But what we're going to talk about mostly in the next couple, maybe the next 40, 50 videos, is more how we can use it for, for example, communication. So, communication. Um, when it comes to vision, that's one good example where we have receptors in our eye, right? So the receptors would be here on our retina. And these receptors are photoreceptors. So these are the ones right here. These are the photoreceptors. Again, photo means light, receptors is the thing that picks up a change. So in this case, if for example, let's say you have someone who's got a ball and he kicks that ball towards you, so you imagine that it's going towards you, that ball will emit light, so that light will be emitted from that ball. Right? So light is traveling towards your eye, and that light will be picked up by the retina in the back of your eye and that will change a light impulse into an electrical impulse and from there it will travel from your sort of receptors to your nerves and then all the way to your brain and then from your brain it will be sent to your muscles to make sure that you maybe catch the ball or you might try to evade the ball right so again the first part was detection which happens in your eye and then it sends, that message gets sent to your brain, and then from there to 
your muscles to actually make a response happen. And this is actually an example of a sensory organ. That word is relatively important, a sensory organ. So all of the other things we talked about were mostly just sensory receptors, one sensory receptor, whereas a sensory organ, you can imagine the, the actual eye itself, there'd be an eye. So this is the back of the eye, the retina, which we'll talk about in soon. But it's not just one receptor, random receptor, but there's lots of them stacked up right next to each other. So basically the whole eye, the whole point of the eye itself is to be able to detect light. So the whole eye is just, it's not not only receptors, but the point of the eye is to be able to detect light. So the point of the eye is to use these photoreceptors really well to be able to detect light. Whereas when it comes to skin, while the skin has also receptors, not the only function of the skin is not to be able to pick up light, whereas more or less the only function of the eye is to be able to pick up light. So for the skin, it obviously has different functions, protection, picking up touch, um, all kinds of stuff, right? Whereas this, the eye is a sensory organ because it only picks up a stimuli. That's its only task. Um, so for this dot point, more, a very simple one. It says identify, which means you need to be able to name. So name the role of receptors in detecting stimuli. The role of receptors in detecting stimuli is that it basically is the first line where it gets picked up. So it picks up that change, but then it has to send a signal on to the hypothalamus or to other effectors which will ultimately make the response happen. So the stimuli detect the change, sorry, the receptors detect the change, detect the stimuli, but then the response happens because of a series of events that happen afterwards. I hope that was useful.